hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Um, but all the calls we can make, as big a fuss as we can make, with as many people as we can make on different boards and commissions, and with the governor's office and the legislature, um, it's going to take a lot of holding together and pushing this from every avenue we can. So, um, so what now? Um, I didn't know there was a Senate bill. Uh, whenever I put this together, the only bill I knew of was Representative Melody Blancet, who is um, a state rep out of Tulsa. Her bill is agriculture providing poultry feeding operations, setback requirements, and then the effective date. The bill is in your um, packet that I handed out. So her bill language is in the packet. Um, it's a, they haven't made committee assignments yet, but I think it's probably pretty obvious it will go to the um, Agriculture and Rural Development Committee. Um, among the state legislators, so the lawmakers, um, there are certain committees in the House, and they're not always called the same thing in the Senate. But I've included in your packets also um, the people on all the committees in the Senate and the House. So in the House, this will first get assigned to the Agriculture and Rural Development Committee. Um, now, it's up to the committee chairs whether to hear that or not. So this is where we have some really serious action items. So in your packets, I have everybody listed who's on the Ag and Rural Development Committee. Those committee chairs, they decide if a bill gets heard or not. Just because a bill's introduced doesn't mean it has a shot. A bill can be just shot down by a committee head by, or by a committee chair or vice chair. They can say, I don't want to hear that right now. So your committee chair and vice chair are in your packet. We need to call them and say, please hear House Bill 2534. We need you to hear House Bill 2534. So, because it's up to them if it even goes to their committee. So, um, after it goes, hopefully, if it goes to their committee and they decide to hear it, um, we have to continue to call and email every person on that committee and explain our position. And I've looked at the Ag um, and Rural Development Committee, and I don't think there are a lot of people from around here on it, unfortunately. Are we having a tornado or something? Um, we'll, we'll run to the dome <laughs> if it is. Um, so after, so if it gets a hearing, so the, the first step is call the committee chairs and email the committee chairs and say, listen to this bill. We want you to hear this bill. If they do hear the bill, it will get a hearing. And then we have to call everyone on that committee and say, we support this bill because X, Y, and Z. We support this bill because, you know, I built my dream home and then they put up 10 massive, you know, factory chicken farms right next to me and it's unhealthy for me and my family and it, you know, it, it's killed my property values, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if the bill makes it out of committee, so let's say that the bill is heard, that's one hurdle. Then the bill is um, voted yes out of committee and it's voted the way we want then it goes to the floor in that respective chamber so this house bill would then go to the floor of the house so 101 members would decide if they wanted to support this bill or not so then that's another hurdle um and the senate bill would go to the senate floor the poultry lobby and farm bureau oklahoma farm bureau will fight this all the way Yes, they have a lot of power in Oklahoma. So here's your list of your chairs and vice chairs. Like I said, that's in your um, packet. So that's phone numbers and names of everybody. So I'm looking at this and we have um, the uh, committees made up of Kingfisher, Orlando, Cherokee, Lane, Piedmont, Lawton, Balco, at least there's someone from Stillwell, Elgin, Arpilar. I've never even heard of that place. Is this all in your packet? Yes. All of it is. Um, Tecumseh, Ida Bell, and then thankfully Muskogee, Tulsa, then Oklahoma City and Chickasha. Two thirds of those people or three fourths, they are not from here. So we have to really sell why this is important for us. But yes, it's all in the packet and I will make extra copies and, and mail them to you if you don't do email or whatever, whatever it takes to get this to you. Well, <laughs> Things are really stacked against us out here, guys. <laughs> it is. I mean, it, it's hard. Um, oh, did I get this? Uh, oh, okay. So, um, so.
So more hurdles for that bill to become law. So we know when it's authored and assigned to a committee. Sorry, it looks like I got tired and repeated myself here. Um, so if it passes out of the House, so let's say our bill is heard in a committee, it passes out of a committee, it passes out of the House, then it goes to the Senate. It can die in the Senate. Or the Senate can pass it but make changes to it. So if the Senate uh, wants to make changes to it, they have to do that by what they call deadline week. So about halfway through March, the House and Senate, they switch bills essentially. So the House works on all these bills for the first month and a half or so, and the Senate works on their bills, and then some things make it and some things don't, and then they switch it. So it goes to the other House. That's called deadline week. That's in mid-March. So we have to get a bill heard in committee, passed through committee, passed on the floor before deadline week in mid-March. So then, say it does, it goes over to the um, uh, other, other side. Unheard bills will die and they can't be reintroduced this session. Um, but say they pass it, say the Senate passes that House bill, but they make changes, they make amendments. Then it goes to a conference committee, which is where they reconcile the changes together. So I think you're starting to see this isn't Schoolhouse Rock. It's not that easy. Um, you know, there are many, many hurdles to get, a, to get a law passed. It is not an easy process. So um, then whenever they go to conference committee, if they can agree on the changes, the House and the Senate can agree on the changes in this one committee, then it would go to the governor's desk to sign. And then by God, I would hope he would sign it by the time it got there after everything would have to go through. So as you can see, this is not an easy process. Denise is on the Agriculture Committee. Um, uh, appropriations and budget. So you'll see in your packets a lot of it says A and B this, A and B that. It's appropriations and budget. So that's what A and B means. It means appropriations and budget. But Denise is on the Ag Committee, so that's good. Um, Matt Meredith from Tahlequah, he's on the, um, he's on the um, Ag Committee. So we have at least a couple of people I think we can count on their support, but we're going to need more than a couple. So resources to track bills. Um, you can read this packet because <laughs> it's so much fun to read. Or if you have a smart device, there's a really great app. It's the Oklahoma Electric Co-op's 57th Legislature Guide. It's a free app. This app is amazing and they made a bunch of improvements to it this year. You can go on and just tap a part of the state and see who the representative is, um, what the district looks like, uh, their contact information, how they're voting. So right now, if everybody can try to find this Oklahoma, and the service in here is bad, dang it. Um, the Oklahoma Electric Co-op's 57th Legislature Guide. It's, this app is really, really great. And they made a lot of improvements now so that you can actually see them vote live. So I'm, it was helpful but it's, it's made a lot of improvements this year. So it lists all of our state and federal representatives with their contact information and how they voted, shows the maps of all that with photos of them, committee agendas, what committees they're assigned to. Um, there's also a section that's new this year that you can make notes um, about a legislator or a law. Um, it's under their official page. So you can you know, write notes like this person, I like that they did this, I don't like that they did that. Um, there are a lot of different features for it. Um, and again, there's the directory of all committees uh, for the House and Senate, and you can track yay and nay votes. So um, if you don't want to do it now, we'll wait till afterwards, and I can show you where to download that. But it's a great, great app. So that's one way to track your bills. Um, I don't think the app can go on a desktop unless it's built for that. But here are your desktop um, options. <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna hit all technology levels here <laughs> um so go to okay oh, okay .gov if you only do a desktop um it's kind of clunky and you have to go to the house tab to track house things and the senate tab to track senate things um 
but you can find people's contact info, see the bills they, they've proposed or authored, download maps of districts, which don't even get me started on gerrymandering um, because the state Senate map looks like a drunk toddler drew it. Um, it's, it's bad because did you know parts of Cherokee County are also represented in Tulsa County for the state Senate? It's wild. I mean, I, I knew it was bad, but whenever I was putting all of this together, because I'm going to show you guys some voting numbers in a little bit, I was blown away by how bad the gerrymandering is here in Oklahoma. Um, so you can track bills and sign up for alerts on a system called LENS, Legislative Electronic Notification System. You have to set up like an account and a username, but whenever you find a bill, so last night I went through and I signed up an alert for House Bill, whatever Melody's was. House Bill 2834, whatever it was. Um, so now, anytime something happens on that bill, I'll get an email. So if it gets a hearing, I'll know. If it doesn't get a hearing, I'll know. If it passes, I'll know. If it's on an agenda coming up, I'll know. So you should all go on, even if you do the app, which is great, but go on and sign up for alerts on Lens for um, bills that you want to track. Also on your desktop, you can watch live debate. This is always really interesting. Um, there's there, it gets a little more heated later in the session so come march it'll 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 be really interesting but you can watch it live um the the house floor debate and whatnot um and i encourage doing that once in a while just just because um also on the legislature website you can find and read those past interim studies like i said they're really fascinating um a friend of mine commissioned one on a on rape kit legislation and some of them don't have very many documents, um, but his had a lot. You know, there was a lot of research that went into that. And because of his efforts, uh, Oklahoma is finally starting to tackle their rape kit backlog. So these interim studies have a lot of value. They really do work. Um, so you can go and look at those. And sometimes there are audio files and things. But the website is very clunky. It is it's not great. Um, also, you can view legislative calendars for um, committee meetings and for floor debate. So don't I, I'm not going to say that this is going to be an easy process to navigate but it's there and if you get used to it it, it it will get easier so all of this sounds really hard and really tedious doesn't it I think it sounds really hard and really tedious um, but the best way to make change is we got to vote for the right people you have to vote and I know that seems like <laughs> Um, duh, but really, if we just had people in there that we could trust to look out for our interests, hope we wouldn't even be sitting here right now. And wouldn't that be easy? Who wants to spend a couple of hours on a Sunday or Saturday once a month getting frustrated because it seems like there's a mountain ahead of you? So we have to vote for the right people. And I'm going to tell you why that is making changes easier than you might think. Each member of the Oklahoma House only represents about 38,000 men, women, and children. 38,000. Um, each member of the Oklahoma Senate represents about 79,000 people. And that's all people. That's, again, men, women, children. That's not just voters. And so only about half of those people are registered to vote. And only about half of those registered people actually do vote. So when you start thinking about it in those terms, you're like, wow, me and, I mean, my dad's got 10 brothers and sisters. And we all live around here. And I'm thinking, man, I know like at least 3,000 people. <laughs> You know, so it's when you start thinking about how it trickles down, it's a lot easier. You can make a change. I don't care what anybody says, even if it's gerrymandered. We can make a change if we just get out there and vote. Um, in house races, particularly Josh West or whomever, like only a few hundred votes will often separate these people. Only a few hundred people. And again, all of us have families that are probably a few hundred people. So that we can do that. Um, so check your voter registration, download a sample ballot, um, download a voter registration form, mail it in, register your friends, your family, your neighbors, make sure everybody is registered to vote. You can do all that at okdove backslash elections. And now this is really going to blow your mind. So I pulled some voting stats for Adair, Cherokee, Delaware, and Mays County. And this is in the house. This is in the Oklahoma house. First of all, look at these districts. What is up with that? I mean, so there's five, 86 is here. Chair, so, I mean, it's just, it, they don't make any sense. The Senate makes even less sense. So in um, District 4, these are all uh, 2018 numbers, this last midterm election we had. In District 4, 
there are only 19,380 registered voters, fewer than 20,000 registered voters in District 4. The winner, Matt Meredith, no one even ran against him. In District 5, which is uh, Delaware and Mays, there are, uh, again, about 20,000 registered voters. Josh West won with 8,200 votes, and Ed Trumbull had 3,800 votes. So he did get beat by more than a few hundred votes. But that's only 12,000 people that cast a ballot. You know, there are 20,000 people registered to vote. 8,000 of them didn't vote. Almost half of those people didn't vote. Imagine if, you know, a couple thousand more could have voted. You know, Ed Trumbull could have, you know, beat Josh West. In District 8, which is Mays, Rogers, and Wagner County, again, about 20,000 registered voters, 12,000 total votes, 12,000 even, were cast for Tom Gann. He beat Daryl Moore um, 6,800 to 5,100. If just a few, like 1,000 more people would have come out to vote, that race would have been so much more competitive. So we have to make sure we vote and we make everybody else vote. In District 86, Adair, Cherokee, and Delaware County. So down here, all of Adair County and part of Cherokee County and little parts of Delaware County here. So um, only 18,000 registered voters in 2018. Um, David Harden, who I think we've heard his wife works for the poultry or something, he beat Rhonda Cox. O only 9,000 people voted in that election. Yeah. 9,000. So half of the people didn't even vote that were registered to vote, not eligible voters who were registered to vote. And David Harden won with 5,400 votes and Rhonda Cox had 3,600. So she lost by, you know, a little less than 2,000 votes. But half the people who were registered didn't even vote. So here we go to the Senate. Um, districts one and three, uh, they didn't have an election this last time because they're staggered. So, but look at these maps. Look at this. So here's Cherokee County, Wagner County. This one goes all the way to Tulsa County. This was crazy when I looked at it. Like Adair County all the way up to Delaware County. I mean, but then it stretches over part of Mays County, part of, I think, Rogers County. Yeah, so District uh, 3 is Adair, Cherokee, Delaware, Mays, and Rogers County. Uh, District 1, or District 18, Cherokee, Mays, Muskogee, Tulsa, Wagner County. And uh, I lived out here the first 18 years of my life, and I've lived in Tulsa the last 18 years of my life. Uh, Tulsa doesn't have much in common out here. I mean, I do, because I love it here, but um, there's not that, I mean, we don't have the same ideologies in mind. So gerrymandering is just a whole nother. Funny you should ask. These crazy districts, um, they change every 10 years, so with every census. So everyone fill out your census, make sure everyone else fills out their census. And it will go to the state legislature to draw these. So the state legislature of 2010, yeah I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure exactly who, but the state legislature drew that. So as an aside, you know, one issue at a time, I guess, um, push for an independent redistricting committee so that it's not just the state lawmakers who have it in their best interest. Because I don't, so Adair County person, I mean, they may have districted this way because the person lives here or up here you know you don't know like pardon me on the on the redistricting yeah. i i'm not sure i'm not sure how i just know that it's the legislature it's the house and or the senate i'm not really sure maybe a combination but either way we can push for and ask the governor's office to have an independent redistricting committee where people would be independently uh, appointed to come up with free and fair electoral maps. So independent redistricting is a very, very, very big deal. So after 2020, it'll probably be by 2022 when the maps are, are redrawn. So independent redistricting, don't let it get off your radar. Um, so here's a fun fact, only 56% of registered voters in Oklahoma cast a ballot in 2018 in the midterm elections, 56. So I'm to the end of my presentation, but the attachments in your packet, you're gonna have contact for the House of Representatives, ever, all 101 of them, contact info for the Senate, all 49 of them, the House Committee assignments, the Senate Committee assignments, 
a copy of Melody Blancet's bill, House Bill 2534, and the new ODAF rules that are being proposed. And I actually haven't even gotten to look over those yet. So the ODAF uh, rules um, that you all have, and, and, and I'm sure a lot of you have looked at them too, those comments are due February 5th, is that right? Yeah. yeah. So we need to email, um, yes, yep. So we need to get some emails together tonight, tomorrow, ask other people to, because I went to that meeting in Oklahoma City, and whenever they said who was against the rules, who was for the rules, it was overwhelmingly against. It was like 80% of the people were against them, about 10% of the people were for them, and about 10% of the people um, thought they were just fine. So, um, but, so new rules up for debate, um, those need to be in on Tuesday. So not only in your um, packet are the, a copy of the rules, but also the woman that you need to email them to. And if you don't like to email, it, you know, I know that the internet out here is not the greatest uh, in some places, um, work, work with somebody, I'll work, I'll work with you, I'll call you and we'll transcribe it. Um, just make, you know, we'll just make it happen. Whatever support I need to provide, I'm 100% on board with that. Yes, sir. So who do you think are some potential allies for us? I mean, we're going in poultry industry and Farm Bureau. We need to And what's scary about Farm Bureau is they're also really tight with oil in this state. Um, I think it will be helpful to reach out to your legislator, no matter who they are or what party they are. I wish that City of Tulsa would get on board. Um, I know G.T. Bynum, the mayor, and um, you know, I, I would like to sit down with him and say, hey, you know where our water comes? Yeah. Here in Tulsa, it comes to our watershed, you know? Um, and that's why Melody Blancet has become involved and Denise Brewer, because you know, they, they care about that and they care about water quality and, and just the environment in general. I think he probably just hasn't paid attention. Honestly, I mean, he's got, I mean, I'm sure he has a million issues that are within the city limits of Tulsa and just hasn't even thought about it, but he should. And I'm going to, I'm going to put that on my to-do list. Thank you for reminding me.